Today is Tuesday, January the 14th, and here's the headline that sort of sums up what happened uh, midday today. U.S. stocks slipped following a report that the United States would likely remain, uh, maintain tariffs on Chinese goods until after the election. So once again, we have a Donald Trump unpredictable market. Uh, the reason the market gets spooked by that is because the uh, phase one is asking China to spend far too much on agricultural products than they could ever spend. I mean, the most they've ever spent is $26 mil billion, and they're being asked to spend $40 billion. So the chances of, of them reaching or making their, uh, their commitments are pretty low, and the market knows that. So they call that the Jason Bourne market. The first thing Jason Bourne does when he walks into a room is look for an exit just in case. So that was um, something that I caught on Finviz. So let's go back to the Finviz page that we always look at and look at the volume. The Dow had pretty big volume, but that was also apparent in the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 as well. Advancers barely eked out an edge over decliners by about seven points. But over here you see a lot more red than you saw yesterday, and it's the healthcare which was the only red that we had yesterday, other than um, oh, there was one stock in the rest of the place that was red. But um, you know, healthcare was in the red yesterday. Today it's all in the green, and your red is in the technology, the services, the consumer goods. We had three banks reporting earnings today: J.P. Morgan, and you can see Citibank. They were both up. Uh, pretty decently, but you had Wells Fargo who missed, so they were down 5.3%. But that's not the reason the market dropped when it did um, just after lunch. It's the uh, news about the China tariff staying on until after the election. Um, look, this president is going to play everything uh, for the election, but the thing that he wants most of all is to keep the stock market um, going so that he can talk about it. So he's going to do something to pump up the stock market, but it may be not going to let him get away with that. So let's look at a couple of other things here. Let's take a look at our watch list. Let's take a look at um, our S&P, and let's go into our details. So yesterday you all apparently seemed to like Thinkorswim. There was a pretty decent number of views and a few more likes than usual. But I do want to get back to mode of wave uh, tomorrow night if possible. Um, but here's what we're looking at on the daily on the S&P 500. We just did a little doji here and we fell off of the highs, but that's a pretty decent doji. Let's look at something different today. Let's look at the 10 days, one hour. And I might have referred to this uh, in the past. This is something that a friend of mine out in Seattle taught me, and it's to look at a uh, one standard deviation move on either side of a midline for the hourly candles over 10 days. So this is just looking at 10 days, and these are one hour candles, and look how they oscillate from the top range to the bottom didn't quite make it back to the top this time, but we're hugging the middle, which means that if you believe in this 10-day, 60-minute, uh, um, one standard deviation uh, limits signifying breakouts uh, or breakdowns, that we're in the middle, and um, it really doesn't um, tell us which way we're going to go. Going to look at a few more stocks and then go back and look at the McClellan oscillator. A uh, Apple dropped $4 today. And here's what it looks like on its 10-day uh, one hour. Again, it's playing in the middle. Um, let's go to Caterpillar. Caterpillar on its 10-day one hour. Um, not, we're not seeing too much there in terms of a signal. So let's go back and look at the daily chart and we can see that we're just staying within that channel that we've been in now since November. Um, because the ex-dividend is coming on Thursday, I took today as the opportunity to roll my 135 
calls. Now the stock is at 147, and I'm still sitting on 135 calls because I wouldn't want to be a buyer of Caterpillar at 147, but I do want to own Caterpillar so that I can get the dividend, um, which will be give, which will I'll be eligible for on Friday. So I rolled to the monthly 35s and picked up 47 cents. I'm not sure that's going to be good enough to save me and allow, allow me to keep the, uh, the dividend. So if the market goes down again tomorrow, then I'm going to roll into March 135s, and that should be able to keep me my $1.02 dividend. That's where I see the gain coming for Caterpillar in the short term, because I don't think the Chinese are going to be able to maintain um, their commitments to the United States. Now, maybe if they fall short on agriculture, they'll make up for that in buying some hardware. Um, but China is not in the business of re-electing Donald Trump. So you can expect uh, a rocky time between now and November uh, with regards to any discussions on phase two. Look, they got themselves delisted from the currency manipulation manipulators list, and I think that's a big win for China. And it would be rather disingenuous to put them back on that list anytime soon. So they really um, are the tail wagging the dog here on this deal, in my opinion. Whirlpool was a, a stock that was up today, and you can see we're still looking at our Fibonacci's but we're stuck on this 78.6% Fibonacci, but that's all right. We broke over 150, and we gained another 45 cents today. Whirlpool's a great stock, great to earn. Its stochastics are showing um, some possible downside, so let's keep an eye on that. But my um, uh, long and short positions, my verticals, are for February. Let's look at um, AT&T, which is just down one cent. It's still a 5.5% 5 um, 5 dividend stock. Don't forget that. It's now trading X dividend as of uh, Thursday of last week. Amazon was a big sufferer, and uh, I'm glad I didn't add to my uh, vertical position there. But that was a pretty disappointing move off of 1900. So that 1900 is really proving tough to break. We've been at the 1900 since. Well, look at this candle. I can't point with my mouse, but um, that 1897 is the 61.8% Fibonacci. And that together with 1900 is. Um, proving to be pretty good resistance. But look at the volume today. It was fairly high, and our um, stochastics are continuing to move downwards. Now, our faster-moving stochastic is getting down to the green line of oversold and could turn around and do a slight move up, but the slower stochastic still is going to move probably down to... Uh, the oversold line and take a longer time to do it. But if you look at it historically, um, the previous move was a down and then up. But um, I don't know. Um, Amazon may be headed for more downside. It just depends what the market thinks it's going to report in earnings. Do we have anything else that we want to look at? Home Depot, which we're now out of. Um, is just suffering. Let's go back and just finish the day by looking at the McClellan Oscillator, which uh, didn't move yesterday, and today is not likely to move either. So we, we really are spending now a long time, more than a week, chattering around this neutral area where money is moving into the market and out of the market at the same rate. So that's it for today. I'll talk to you tomorrow, and I should be back to my computer and Motive Wave. Thank you very much for your support and your patience.